2 Thessalonians 2, and Revelation chapter 17. All right, the title of today's video, uh, or basically the subject of today's video, is Where is the Antichrist and the Nephilim and Giants? So where are they hiding? Where are they right now? So this will probably be very interesting. Now, I don't think, I could be wrong, but I don't think there's a video that actually showed this particular location where they would be hiding. It's actually an easy location that a lot of the conspiracy buffs and some of you people uh, would have known, but just never thought about. It's actually a simple location that uh, we would all know about, but we just never thought about. So, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We'll look at verse 3. Look at the last part of verse 3. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who, uh, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Okay, so this is the Antichrist. Now, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3-4, through 4, we see right here that this is talking about the official version of the Antichrist. He's not here yet, the official version. However, the unofficial version is already here, the unofficial version. And I taught that in some of my other videos. In verse 7, for the mystery, uh, let's start in verse 6. And now he know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. See, so not yet, sometime at the future. But in verse 7, for the mystery of iniquity doth what? Already work. But this unofficial stage is already working. This unofficial antichrist stage is already working. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. So here's the thing, is that the unofficial antichrist is already here. So that's where we're going to drive at on how to find the location. You see that? The unofficial version of the Antichrist, he is already here. We saw that at verses 6 through 7. Now, John explains it even more. Look at, uh, keep your hand at Revelation 17. We're going to look at the book of John, 1st John. Turn to your Bibles to the book of 1st John, and then we'll look at chapter 2, chapter 2. <clears throat> We're going to look at 1 John, and we will read verse 2. There is no doubt that there, are, there is an unofficial version of the Antichrist right now. Right now. We'll look at verse 18. Little children, it is the last time. So this is tribulation reference. And as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. See that? This official version, future coming. Even now are there what? Many antichrists. See, that's the unofficial version. But John repeats that. He keeps repeating this unofficial antichrist is already here, even though the official one is not here yet. We're going to look at 1 John chapter 4. Look at chapter 4. And we'll look at verse 3. 1 John chapter 4. And we will read verse 3. Notice the Bible says here, And every spirit that confesseth, confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof... So, see, in the first part of verse 3, there are people who right now say it. This is unofficial version of Antichrist. But the official is future, because keep reading, the official Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it, what, should come. See that? So, future, the official is coming. But look at this, and even what? Now already is it in the world, but there's an unofficial. There is no doubt, unofficial Antichrist is already here. Uh, the official one is future. He's coming in the future. Now, this is the big giveaway, though. The big giveaway is that this is how we can find the location. Where is the Antichrist hiding? So the Antichrist, he is known as what? Son of perdition. So this person, the spawn of Satan, son of Satan, he has some kind of satanic seed that's very different from normal humans. 
So by finding his location, we could also reason out there could be other Nephilim or giants or satanic seed that could be at a similar region where he's at. Wouldn't the Antichrist come from such a region? It would sound rational. So then here's the idea. The idea is, okay, then where would he be, right? Where would he be? Well, here's the idea. <clears throat> if you look back at these verses right here in verse 22, verse 22, who is a liar, uh, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ, he is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. And then you'll notice right here, it's described as the Antichrist. You'll also notice right here that at verse, uh, let's see right here, blah, 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 blah. Verse 18, there are many antichrists that should come in the world. And then you look at chapter 4, which we already looked at. Spirit that confesseth not uh, that Jesus is come in the flesh is the antichrist. So we see right here that in these passages, John, he's giving certain hints and clues about the antichrist. But here's something interesting, too is that he mentions Cain at verse uh, 12. Cain who was of that wicked one at chapter 3 and verse 12. So a lot of this right here is referring to a lot about Satan's children, which is pretty interesting, Satan's children. But here's the idea. The idea is this, is that this spirit of Antichrist, what he is, is that he is the type that would deny Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Now, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. We believe that Jesus Christ, do you believe Jesus Christ is come in the flesh? Yes. Otherwise, you would not have been saved to begin with. You would have a spirit of Antichrist in you, so to speak. <laughs> Jesus Christ, he came down long ago at Calvary, died on the cross, shed his precious blood, and washed away our sins. Amen? But I'll tell you one, one person who doesn't uh, believe that, a religion. Catholics, they believe in every Mass he has to keep coming down. And you eat his flesh every time. So here's the idea. Then this Antichrist, you know what he is? He's the Pope. He's the Pope. He's he has to be Catholic. Really, Pastor? Look at Revelation 17 now. Revelation 17. Where does the beast, the Antichrist beast, where does he come from? Look at Revelation chapter 17. Let me also further prove this argument. Paul said at 2 Thessalonians 2, the Antichrist is already here, right? Isn't that what he said? He said... The Antichrist is already here. But the problem is this. Who's the world ruler during Paul's time? Who's the world ruler during Paul's time? Oh, Roman. Good. Roman. Yeah, good. But it's not the official version. It transformed to the official version right here later on. So this proves more that this is related. We also saw 1 John, this is related with the mass, mass denies it. <clears throat> but Revelation 17 is even more convincing. The Bible says right here in verse 9, and here's the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Okay, now this is a famous passage in Revelation chapter 17 about Babylon, right? The, one, uh, the whore of Revelation, Babylon whore. But it's known as the city on seven hills, right? It's on, it's on seven mountains, right? What is the city known as the city of seven hills? Rome. Rome. A lot of people like to say it's America. You're, you're dead wrong because it says in verse, it says in verse 18, it's a city. City. What's the only city that has political and religious power? There's only one. Only one. It's the Vatican. See that? It's the Vatican. So you see right here, this is plain. This is plain. It's Rome. But look what comes out from her seven hills. <clears throat> look at verse 10. And there are what? 
seven kings. This is repeating from verse 9, right? The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. From out of this are what? And there are seven kings. See that? But look at this. Five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was, that's the Antichrist, and is not, even he is the what? Eighth. And is what? Of the seven. And goeth into what? Perdition. Out of the seven hills comes out seven kings. And who's the seventh and the eighth together? It has to be Rome. It has to be Rome where the king comes from. See that? So thus, this Antichrist is going to be located where? You ever thought about this? He's probably hiding in Rome. But this would make a lot of sense with uh, the Catholic Church getting involved in some weird projects, right? That has to do with aliens and then as well as Nephilim and other weird stuff. Like there's the infamous Lucifer project, right? That the Catholic Church was getting involved in. So uh, the Pope, he also mentioned about communication with aliens as well. So look at this kind of stuff. See, this shouldn't be any surprise. But what about the rest of the Nephilim? Okay, remember there are the ten kings in Revelation? Those are undoubtedly like satanic seeds. So they could, be, uh, they could be reptilian Nephilim or they could be fallen angels. But here's the point. They look like they're connected to Rome too because look at this. Verse 12, And the ten horns which thou sawest, this is the ten-horned beast that the whore was sitting, okay? connected with Rome. And the ten horns which thou sawest are what? Ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, uh, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These ten either fallen angels or reptilian Nephilim kings, they're connected to what? So what am I getting at? What I'm getting at is this, is that it's very possible uh, I'm not saying it's a fact, but it seems very, very possible. There's very good reason out of looking at all the scriptures and as well as looking at current events, documented sources of the Catholic Church getting involved in some kind of weird alien-like projects and stuff like that. They could be in Rome right now. I mean, if the U.S. government, they've got weird stuff in their labs with mutants and aliens, you don't think the Catholic Church can do that too? That's true. <laughs> the Vatican? And they do have a lot of secret in their little archives, okay? Mm -hmm. You can't go have access, see? Very, very possible. This is, could be where the Nephilim, the giants, the Antichrist, they all come from this location. Now, here's the thing, is that mostly, mostly the Nephilim and the satanic seed, the mutants, they come from underground. That's where they come from. So then you go below the sea, you see a lot of strange activity, right, as you go deeper, deeper. Because why? The bottom of the sea is a, just an inch closer to hell, so to speak. So that's where they come from. They come from underground mostly. Then you'll see some of them traveling throughout outer space here and there as they go to God up in the throne in heaven. And then they go throughout the skies over here and then people see weird activity. But they also as well could, could have been, land, they could have landed on Earth. And that's why you see some of these weird reports from federal agents where after these crash landings, then what? Federal agents get involved, then what? Just suddenly disappear. Where could they be? They could be at those lab experiments. They could be at those underground places. And whether the government either does experience uh, experiments, whether the government does experiment with those aliens or those aliens are giving the government orders. The thing is, is that it's very interesting that Roman Catholic Church, they could do the same thing as our current governments are doing. So that's the location of the demonic activity, is that this is not to say they all come from Rome, okay? I believe they mostly come from below, because that's where hell is, right? For all demonic activity. But that, but that could also explain where they come from below, why you'll see them traveling throughout outer space. They, they see weird activity. 
and during those crash sites where they landed, it could all be gathered up at the government labs or right here at Rome. Who knows, maybe the Antichrist already landed someplace. They're breeding and training him somewhere at Rome. And one day when they breed and train this person at Rome, the, the guy will rise up and declare himself to be the New World Order leader.